Hi guys, this is SDJR Center for 88 speaking with an update for January 2019. Now there's a few things I wish to discuss in this update, so let's get right to it. First of all, uh, outings for Amiens 1918. As covered in a little video last week, uh, Amiens has got another show this coming weekend at the Western Supermare Model Railway Exhibition. Now this is a wonderful show with all the money raised uh, from the event going to charity. Uh, so far Keith, the show organiser, has raised over £45,000 for charity and it really is for a worthwhile cause. And he normally has about 30 layouts um, on display there, all from around the country. They really are wonderful layouts and there's a good selection of trade and of course excellent catering on site as well. And it really is well worth a visit. And I can't thank Keith enough for managing to uh, get Amiens back there again this year. As after all, Amiens was there last year and it was its first show. So uh, this show will mark its first anniversary on the circuit. And uh, well, what an anniversary it's been. It's been uh, 18 shows, I believe. This will be its 18th show since finishing it um, last year. And uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful year for the layout. So it'd be n it's nice to get back to that show and sort of uh, mark the occasion with that. Speaking of World War One layouts, as some of you may know, uh, our Great Model Railway Challenge layout, Go Forth, had its final sort of show uh, back in December uh, at Signals Models, where it's currently being stored. And as you all know, we've sadly now got to the stage where we're starting to um, advertise it for sale. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen it yet, on the SDJR SNF88 Facebook page, along with my own personal page as well, uh, we've got an advertisement for the layout up there and it includes everything um, in the description. Uh, none of the rolling stock or um, anything like that will be included with the layout. This is purely because most of the stock on the layout is actually from my World War One Trench Railway Amiens 1918 and of course as you can imagine without locomotives and other things uh, I'll be a bit stuck. But there are a number of uh, items included including the rail gun, all the buildings, all the figures. Um, so do go check out those posts. I've also put it on RM Web under the Great Model Railway Challenge Go Forth um, topic that I've got going on there about the construction that, um, of the layout on set along with the team and other bits and pieces of information about the layout as well. So do go check that out. I'll pop a link in the description below as well if you're interested in the layout. Ideally we would love it to go to uh, a loving home and we would like to thank Signals Models ever so much for storing the layout over the past couple of months because without them uh, we wouldn't have been able to keep the layout and it would have been long gone by now. So we would like to thank them and uh, hopefully it will go to a good home. Uh, again, on the subject of railways during the First World War, uh, I've got a few projects coming up and I hope to do a few videos of these um, You know, time um, if I've got time to do them. And that is actually renumbering a number of locos. Again, on Go Forth, you will see that the standard gauge railway on there, which was represented by our 00, there were a number of ROD locomotives that you saw on the show and, of course, at the exhibition, including a Batman Robinson 04 or ROD, a Hornby Q6, and a Hornby J15. Now, these are renumbered projects that I've done uh, for the purpose of that layout. Uh, and ironically, these locomotives would have seen service during the First World War or relatives of them. Uh, the Q6 or T2, as it was known then, uh, probably wouldn't have gone to the front, but its sister, the T1, did. And they look very, very similar. So that was the reasoning behind that locomotive. Uh, the J15, or as it was known then, the Y14, saw a lot of active service during the First World War. And that one I really enjoyed renumbering. And then, of course, we've got the Robertson 04, which, of course, is also known as the ROD, uh, which is short for Railway Operating Division. And those locomotives were purpose-built uh, to be sent over to the front. And again, there, the LNER made a number of modifications after the First World War. But again, we won't go into too much detail about those. But anyway, these renumbering projects, I really enjoyed doing them. And it's been great going through a list of locomotives that have currently been provided by ready-to-run manufacturers uh, that have the potential of being backdated. Uh, as mentioned, these are not 100% accurate. There's a number of mo later modifications that they would have received uh, from coming back from the front. Uh, but personally, I think they do the job quite well. And I've been really enjoying uh, renumbering these locos into ROD. And I've got a selection of them that I'm waiting to get round to doing. Uh, one of which is, of course, my sound-fitted uh, Dean's Goods in uh, BR Black. That'll be renumbered into ROD Black. And then hopefully at a later stage this year, it'll be joined by the Khaki um, ROD uh, Dean's Goods that are being provided by Oxford Rail. 
We also have another J15 that was picked up in the Hatton cell along with a GWR ROD. Now, the GWR version of the ROD would have never gone to the front in that condition. Those modifications were added to the locomotive after the First World War, but at the price of £59, uh, it was a bit of a, you know, it was such a good deal that you know, uh, sort of you could twist history a bit. And again, uh, as with modern railways, rule one does apply here. Uh, but I do plan to do a few modifications to the locomotive to sort of backdate it a bit. And then we have a Batman E4 as well. Now, the Batman E4 um, surprised me. I recently purchased a ROD book uh, thanks to another YouTuber. I'll pop his uh, link in the description below. But I met him at Peterborough for the first time. And while we were there, we were discussing the railways of the First World War. And he showed me this wonderful book that he actually picked up at the event. And uh, I quickly ran away from the layout for five minutes uh, and managed to purchase his book. And in there is loads of wonderful pictures of the railways on the front during the First World War, um, thanks to people that took pictures back then um, of the ROD in operation. And there's a huge variety of locomotives I never knew went to the front, including uh, an E4. And there's one solar picture of this locomotive on the front in ROD livery. So again, this was another locomotive I purchased in the Hatton cell, and it's going to be perfect for this little renumbering project. And then there is one more locomotive, which has also just arrived. It arrived on Monday, and that is, of course, the new Hornby J36. And I've gone for the BR early version, uh, Haig, which, again, these locomotives saw widespread use during the First World War. And the plan is to renumber this one into ROD Black. Ironically, as this one came through the post, Hornby announced their 2019 range. And for those of you who haven't seen it, it really is a range and a half. There are so many uh, new locomotives and items. Uh, in this range one of which of course is another j36 and ironically it is in rod livery but unlike the one that i'm going to be renumbering it is in khaki livery so hornby did a good choice there so i'm again another rod locomotive i'm looking forward to and one i'm looking forward to renumbering as well i also recently got a soldering iron uh for christmas i hope you all had a wonderful christmas and happy new year by the way and uh, soldering is something I've been meaning to do for a number of years and there's a number of projects that this year I plan to get around to doing and the soldering iron will become, um, well, is a, a tool that I very much need to use. Uh, one of which is, of course, sound fitting locomotives. As you know, I've been really getting into digital sound as well and most of the World War One fleet is fitted with DCC sound now. Some of these locomotives, such as the E4, are quite complicated to fit and you really need to sort of, you know, cut the wires down and basically fit your own there's no real sort of plug and play system for them so the soldering iron is going to come in very very handy for this project again this is something i look forward to hopefully doing in the not too distant future and getting around to recording speaking on the subject of recording as you may have seen recently i've done a number of videos about sound edits now these clips are obviously from previous videos and i'm going through my archive and finding my favorite videos that i've done in the past and basically re-uploading them as separate videos, so such as the Batman 4MT Collectors Club model, which you recently saw um, the other week. Um, we've also done the Hornby 72XX, and that was a totally new sound edit, and it took me a number of weeks to edit those sounds together, and I was very, very pleased with the results. But we have a number more um, of those videos on the way, including the Hornby Bullied Pacific, uh, the Hornby 4MT, and of course the Batman 7F. Now the Batman 7F, I've got a number of sound edits for this one, uh, as you can imagine, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting around to actually uploading this video in hopefully the not too distant future. So anyway, I hope you enjoy these videos that I've been doing and um, there's plenty more of those to come. And of course, a load of new videos as and when I get around to filming them. At the moment, I'm doing a bit of spring cleaning at the moment. I cannot move around uh, up in the loft. Hence the reason why I've done the video in this format today. So what I'm currently doing, in fact, is what I'm doing now while recording this video, is clearing out my loft, uh, making space um, so I can actually get around to doing some proper modelling uh, in the not too distant future as well. Uh, another thing that's also on the cards is, of course, the building of another micro layout. And while we're on the subject of micro layouts, I hope you enjoyed the Hornby Christmas video this year. I was really, really pleased with reading all you, all you guys' comments on both their video and all their uh, social media posts about that layout, as well as my own personal video on that as well. I was really, really pleased how well that layout was accepted. And ironically, it's even been invited to a model railway exhibition this year, so it must be doing good. So I'm very, very pleased with how that turns out, and I'm sure there'll be a couple more videos on that layout in the not-too-distant future. Uh, as mentioned in that video, I was all about adding a shuttle system 
system and I actually have the shuttle system with me here I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this but that is a shuttle system in the bag there and that is something I need to solder onto the layout as well so that'll be something uh, possibly for another future video as well so anyway I hope you enjoyed this update uh, that's enough rambling for now apologies for the little interruption by the uh, flash in the background there you can probably hear barking that must be a postman arriving again as per usual so anyway I hope you enjoyed this update and I look forward to hearing from you in the not too distant future so anyway, this has been SDJR, SNF88 speaking, and thanks for watching.